Hi, my name is Miyoshin Tom Jones. I'm a recently ordained Soto Zen Buddhist priest. Back in the 70s, after I finished college, I moved to New York City. I was playing in rock and roll band. I got involved in uh, shooting drugs, so I was uh, became a heroin addict, and um, that's really where things got started. Uh, I got very sick, and I wound up in a hospital, and I spent the better part of two years living in hospitals and when I finally got better I went back to New Jersey and stayed at my parents house for a while until I recovered and then I went back to work and I got a job and uh, in the meantime I had gotten tested um, my dentist recommended that I get tested to see if I was HIV positive thought never even crossed my mind but I did and um, one day sitting in my office, a doctor called uh, the office and he told me over the phone that uh, the test came back and I was HIV positive. And uh, it was a total shock to me and I literally went into shock at that time. So that's where the journey began. Uh, after I found out that I was uh, HIV positive in 1987, um, with the help of some very good friends, uh, I found a clinic in New Brunswick and uh, began going there, this is 1987, 1988, um, for treatment. But ironically, there was no treatment for HIV at that time. And uh, I was... Uh, I was invited to become a part of a support was led by a social worker, and uh, she uh, she asked me at one point if I'd be interested in doing volunteer work, and I asked her what that meant, and she said uh, going to hospitals and uh, people's homes with with HIV and AIDS, and just visiting them, and so. I was happy to do that, and I realized after visiting somebody in the hospital, uh, I remember walking into the hospital room and seeing this man lying in the bed uh, who had very advanced stage of uh, AIDS, and I wasn't even in the room for a minute, and I just became so repulsed because he was literally dying. And I was frightened by what I saw and uh, turned around almost immediately and left the room. I was very disappointed in myself, but uh, that's what happened. You know, seeing the guy in the hospital room dying and me being so overwhelmed by what I was seeing and then leaving the room was really a pivotal moment for me uh, in my life. Uh, and it is what led me uh, to the next sort of stage in my, uh, on my, on my spiritual journey, which was uh, seeing uh, a course that was being offered at the Omega Institute called Being with Dying, and I realized immediately on seeing that, having had the experience of uh, basically abandoning the man in the hospital who was dying from AIDS, that if I was going to be of help to anyone, or to myself even, I really needed to go to the Omega Institute and learn more about uh, what was advertised as being the dying. So then, after I left Omega, having been introduced 
to uh, Buddhism and having been introduced to the work of Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, I was very excited and I went back to my support group and started talking about it with the people in my support group. And the social worker who led the support group said she wanted to introduce me to the woman who was the director of the funding for all of the programs in the county. And when I did that, this woman who was the, uh, you know, the director of funding, she said to me, Tom, why don't you develop a program like that for us here in Middlesex County? I was, again, taken aback because I'd never done anything like this before, but within a year's time, I was getting federal funding, uh, to promote a program that I developed with the help of a bunch of friends called Discovering Peace, which was designed to utilize mindfulness practice uh, and help people who were currently living with HIV and dying from uh, AIDS to uh, facilitate their own process at that time. It turned out to be uh, a quite remarkable program because I was so fortunate that um, I had a friend who was a PhD student at Rutgers who had lived in Tibet and Nepal and a woman who had been teaching mindfulness at uh, Rutgers uh, University Hospital for several years, and a chaplain who had become a very good friend of mine who had also uh, started an organization of his own uh, that was designed to uh, provide retreats and spiritual support for people with AIDS. So these three people became an integral part of my life. All of them had uh, experience with uh, meditation practice. Uh, the woman at the hospital teaching mindfulness, doctors and nurses, and uh, the PhD student who had lived in Tibet and Nepal, and the chaplain uh, who had been practicing uh, spiritual practices all of his life. It was uh, a remarkable time and totally transformative for me. I saw myself as being, you know, the newbie, and, uh, and I was just totally grateful to have these people come into my life, and it was, uh, it was a beautiful thing, and we did this together for three years, doing programs, six-week programs in the, in, the, in the fall and in the spring called Discovering Peace, Discovering Peace and, and helping all these people with HIV and AIDS. In retrospect, uh, you know, I discovered uh, or int was introduced to Buddhism as a result of having uh, been diagnosed with HIV back in 1987. And my sitting practice, uh, I found, actually helped with my own health. So. Uh, I remember one teacher saying, you know, uh, we cultivate physical stability in our posture so that we can cultivate our mental stability as well. And mental stability, I think, is a key uh, element of uh, sitting uh, meditation practice. I, I think for anybody who's interested in meditation themselves, I think it's very important to, uh, you know, find a teacher somewhere who's teaching uh, how to meditate and then uh, trust that the teacher knows what they're talking about. And um, I think the hardest thing for a lot of people, uh, myself included, was to find a way to actually sit down on a regular basis. Now, it doesn't have to be every day, but there should be consistency. And one teacher told me a long time ago, don't try to control it. 
let it control you. What an opportunity it is for our, you know, the, the, the cultivation of our well-being by following a structure, which is what Buddhism is about. It's not about, you know, learning how to become rigid in any way, but it's really about taking yourself and putting yourself down on a cushion, sitting still, following your breath, and these things can have enormous benefit, and I speak for myself. I'm living with HIV now since 1987, it's 2019. I don't know how long that is, you can do the math yourself. It's a long time, and many of the friends that I had that I met with HIV back in the 80s and 90s uh, have passed, unfortunately. So I'm not saying that meditation necessarily saved my life, but it has done a lot for me emotionally, psychologically, and help to create a stability and structure in my own life that uh, we say in Buddhism actually makes life possible.